with here. Okay, so after we after we get to here, right? That's self-explanatory. Okay. Now from here we go straight down there and then up. Okay, that's the simplest form, right? So it's essentially if if he cuts in towards my neck, right? There's that, right? Let's say that he disengages, comes around to the other side, and I can get him there. Okay? Either there or up at the head. Now, if he goes downward, so let's say, so after the first one, after the first one here, mm -hmm. now you come around and come over my head to, to an overhead strike. No, overhead. Okay, overhead, sorry. Right? You see, I've also got that. Right? Okay. So, it can be, you know, depending on what the situation is, it can be anything. The important bit, and in reality, too, if I were to do this first beat when he comes in, boom, yeah. that's where that second, second one is going to be, right? Okay. Right. Now, the other way that you can use it is if he fainted, right, and I fell for it, and now he's coming up with that thing. It's it, it gets me into the habit of bouncing right off of that, right off of that strike. And that's another reason why we use Cho a lot in uh, sparring because you can control it. You can you can keep it from getting out of you know getting out of, out of hand. If you if I'm doing size all the time, a lot of people do, you know. And it, you know it's it's funny because you think nobody would do side because you can't actually cut through anything. <laughs> right? But no, people do. Okay. So instead of keeping it here, right, you get lots of the, whoa, 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 you know, and that can be okay, right, depending on what you're doing. Like if I'm going from one guard to another, whoa, whoa, that's okay, right? Here, we're, right, okay. Now, the, uh, Let's say I come up here and parry this strike here, okay? Mm -hmm. So now he's going to come around, right, to go over there, right? So I can parry that one with that circle there and then come in there. We talked about that, I think, at some point before, too, okay? So that's where that next bit comes in, okay? So when I'm up here, if I, and, and that can come directly from there. So if he comes here from my neck, right, and I go to there, and he comes around this way, that's, that's a very nice little opportunity that you can do if you kind of practice that bit there, mm -hmm. okay? Now you can take it to different extremes here, whereas let's say he pushes my blade down, I can then do the same thing, right? Um, if I continue it, let's say I'm up here like this, he pushes down, I'm like that. Now, when he disengages, I can start coming up for my Sarlacc sweeps, right? And then at that point, you get that last, that last thing. Right. So if, let's say you're coming in this way. Diagonal? Yeah, diagonal here. And I can do it like this. That, that's kind of more of what it is. So even if you back up, right? Okay. So I come in here like this, he backs up. See, now look at how as I'm stretching out, it still kind of gets to it, mm -hmm. okay? Now you can, of course, the lower you go in that Sarlacc sweep, the further you can reach them. That's why you practice kind of going low. It's not necessarily that you'll do it off of three. <laughs> we just do that because it's, you know, good. Good practice and it's, it sets a rhythm. Okay. Right. But so if we take this and pick it apart so that it's not so abstract, mm -hmm. that's what we get. Right? So this stuff is all very useful as yeah, just kind of free, right? You see? So as I'm coming in here, boom, boom, boom. Whoa. <laughs> okay. And there's you get more of the shicho feeling, right? This this kind of relentless 
forward attack, right? When I'm here and I'm, you see, it, even taking tiny little steps like that, a lot okay, to with. you can you can close the distance pretty well. All right. Sure. Yes, sir. 